Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And as always, we try to start with a little bit of news on EVE Online. There's not a lot of news over the last week as far as I could tell. We got a small patch and uh, the Plex for Good drives over. So that's probably one of the shortest Plex for Goods drives uh, that we've seen so far. But when it comes to game development or progression on the story, uh, I didn't notice all that much. Now... Uh, granted, I don't have that much time to play EVE myself, uh, but I can imagine that CCP is basically at the moment working hard on the next big feature for the game, which should be direct enlistment. And uh, as far as the planning goes, both the uh, story arc for probably direct enlistment should still be coming this quarter, as well as a deployment on the server itself. Uh, so for the month of March, I'm definitely uh, expecting quite a little bit, uh, the story arc and then stuff coming to the test server and then finally the release of direct enlistment probably by the end of march uh, is what i would personally expect but it is definitely stuff that i am personally looking forward to uh, we always of course also take a quick look at the new Eden store should be interesting because at the moment there is a sale happening there we go front and center uh, sale for Omega time um, so 20% off on a single month and then when you get into the packages it adds up to potentially like a 56% off on 24 months of Omega that should drive a lot of demand for Plex at the moment and you may already have spotted it on the um, on the ticker below and uh, that it does have a little bit of an impact so on the services front there we go uh, easy to find the sale compared to everything else when it comes to the pilot services so a bit of a surprise to me i'm not sure exactly why this one is coming out right now because i personally feel like there's not exactly that much hype except that we know that direct enlistment is on the planning and we got the roadmap for the year uh, but a pretty a pretty nice sale happening uh, in the new eden store so let's dive into the market take a look at what's happening here and as always we start with pilot services coming in at 220 there we go and let's get to that plex chart right here um so it, it has to catch up so the chart is still a little bit behind uh so the five million marks probably up here somewhere and you can see that short uh, the daily average for today is at 4.8 million so we will have an increased price after a pretty nice uh decline over the over most of the month of february here for the price of plex from well pretty much that 5 million range towards the 4.5 million but we are back at above 5 million for the sellers and 4.8 million for the buyers that definitely shows that very strong demand here all of a sudden and the reason is obvious uh, people don't like to put down the full 5 million uh, for Plex so the sellers are actually probably still having a little bit of a hard time to unload everything um, but uh, people are like desperate and are willing to go up to 4.8 million uh, just to still grab a plex below that 5 million mark so just 200,000 disc in a uh, spread between sellers and buyers is definitely not a lot if you look at the player owned trade hubs at those well Gita is the uh, cheapest seller and uh, almost the best buyer there's someone coming in with a month of <laughs> 500 plex here willing to buy that just above 4.8 million as well so uh, good luck to everyone that wants to turn plex into omega time during the sale because well obviously you are going to have an impact on the market here let's see if there is a direct response for other stuff here is the multiple pilot train certificates definitely uh, a response right here you can see how the daily price range here uh, shot up all of a sudden so we get uh, a higher point well above the 2 billion mark one year high point on those daily averages five day moving average also that started to hesitate is going back up so we are talking almost 2.1 billion for the sellers and the buyers still careful on this one 1.8 billion um, that's almost 300 million is in spread here that's actually respectable definitely a difference uh, compared to Plex so very interesting here for Plex I feel like the response so far has been buyers pushing up the price but 5 million for the sellers is something that they seem to be very happy with while on the multiple pilot trade certificates it's the sellers that have shot up in price so I think a little bit of panic buying um, happening here as well when buyers are now just willing to uh, stay put and are opening up a bit of spread very very interesting 
for the skill extractor you can see how we uh, still have to catch up to what's happening with the sale at the moment as we're still trending down uh, basically on the last couple of daily averages on this one we are talking about 515 million for the sellers 485 for the buyers definitely not a big spread but pretty much in line with what we're used to i think for the skill extractor market and we're not the most expensive just yet next week we should probably see at least a little bump from what's happening with plex at the moment the impact on the injectors here are the large scale injectors continuing the slow trend of the last couple of months almost up in price uh, towards the 900 million range and we're talking 924 million for one seller going up to 950 very quickly and the buyers are also above 900 million at this point so large scale injectors definitely very expensive and pretty much the most expensive range for the entire year probably pretty much the most expensive range ever for the large scale injectors when it comes to the small scale injectors well again definitely a different chart it's doing its own thing a little bit so we get a, an early bump basically that's already starting to come down for the small scale injectors in the last couple of days we are at 191.5 million for the sellers 177 for the buyers definitely this feels like a little bit of a difference here as well buyers back down below a 180 um although it's still just a 15 million spread well that gets a little bit closer to the 10 million so i do get the feeling here that buyers are a bit more careful and are trying to open up the spread on this higher price point whereas for the large scale injectors we are at nine yeah above 900 million so that's less than 50 million on something that costs almost a billion isk that's a much more narrow spread basically a far more uniform move up towards this higher range that's tolerated by the market that is selling around 2000 uh, large scale injectors a day small scale injectors oh it's actually a smaller market just a couple hundred on a daily basis and here buyers are willing to wait and uh, are hoping to bring prices back down definitely interesting to see how these two markets move in very different ways Next up, we've got the daily alpha injector, of course, and very fast response this time. Although, again, within, I think, the range that CCP is looking for. Uh, these averages, though, getting close to that 50 million mark already. But this was the sale that happened early February, pushing the price down to the 40 million range. And now, a couple of weeks later, we're back at 49, almost 50 million for the sellers. 44 million for the buyers 10 percent spread pretty normal uh, at this range but the question is does this have enough momentum to break straight through the 50 million that i think is going to be very important to see how ccp will handle this market if that goes fast i think it's going to be really uh, a difficult discussion from ccp if their goal is indeed to keep the daily alpha injectors below a 50 million range for the alpha players to keep that goal going uh, that is my personal theory on this and that's what in my opinion we are seeing here uh, during this sale this sale and this sale right here which is faster and faster right the interval keeps getting smaller and i think that they'll have to keep making uh, faster and faster adjustments or interventions into this market to keep it uh below the 50 million range but very very interesting uh, very sharp increase right back to the price we had uh, before the final push that then was squashed by ccp so finally we have the hyper cores that are definitely showing a little bit of hesitation here but at a very high range so obviously pilot services are very expensive at the moment 500,000 for the sellers 480 for the buyers pretty narrow spread there is strong demand here as well and actually look at that uh, very noticeable increase in volume obviously that is tied to the plex for good drive uh, quite a few players have auctioned off some unique items and then turned all those proceeds into plex in order to do donate to plex for good I, I think this is actually a pretty good system because the uh, hypernet relay uh, although it is an enabler for gambling in a sense it is actually gambling with the best possible arts because well the tickets are what they are um, and, and you basically get your fair chance uh, whenever you take part in the hypernet relay and so auctioning off expensive and unique items there in order to then go into the plex for good drive is definitely something uh, that is starting to happen and i think that's actually a pretty uh, good way of handling these types of transactions rather than going through the rmt route or anything like that 
so for the pallet services generally we are of course quite expensive and the uh, black sale that's happening in the new eden store now should push everything up uh, for how long and how high that's what we'll see in the next few days next up we have the minerals coming in at 10.05 there we go let's start with tritanium and not really good news i would say you can see that we are very close to the four isk uh, mark we even touched that on a daily average um just at the start of the week i think that's going to be so at the moment we are for the sellers looking at 410 right so there was actually a pretty big seller at 405 when i was making the ticker not that long ago i think it was 60 plus million units so all of that did just get snagged up that's kind of interesting and now we get buyers coming in at 406 as well that has to be yeah there we go in the last minute so um there is a lot of movement apparently in the titanium market but uh very close to the four isk mark and then if we lose that on the buyer side uh, i think the pressure will be on four isk it's still in the middle of the one year charge for me it's again uh in that 50 50 proposition if i'm mining for for ores and for titanium specifically i would probably unload half of it and keep the other half to build up uh, a reserve for better prices 4.5 uh, plus would be the dream of course considering this one year chart next up we have pyrite let's see if the trend is uh, continuing yes you can clearly see here the last week five day moving average going back down so the pressure is on we are apparently oversupplying the market a little bit still at 10 16 for the first seller but 998 for the buyers buyers have gone down below the 10 isk mark and that becomes an expectations once they reach that and once they can actually grab some of that pyrite below 10 isk which makes it very difficult for the uh, sellers to push the price back up so definitely interesting uh, my theory at the moment would be that it's a little bit quieter in Nelsic at the moment fewer replacements needed and as a result a little bit less industrial output means a little bit less demand uh, for uh, for minerals while supply is probably staying quite steady it is we are in the winter months and I think that activity tends to not uh, crawl to, to a halt uh, that quickly uh, Mixon confirming that yet again while uh, last week we were trying to get back above that 20 day moving average you can see that here now we are clearly going lower yet again sellers are coming in at 55.76 and buyers at 53 we are well below the 60 isks now for mexalon and uh, basically hopefully we can defend the 50 and this on the one year chart starts to look a lot worse so i would say if i'm mining for mexalon i'm actually starting to stockpile it rather than sell it and make the situation even worse Next up, we have Losek. Here is the oxygen chart, and another step on the uh, opposite side up here for uh, isogen definitely absorbed very quickly by the market here you can also see volumes coming in on the opportunity to sell above 550 apparently we are again just below that for the sellers 540 for the buyers though look at that spread just 10 isk spread between sellers and buyers on something that costs 550 that is very very narrow and uh, now you can see again here we get a 36 million units waiting at 550.8 but that's really it for those large volumes then it's a 553 another 30 million but where are the 300 million the 4 billion units that's down here at 650 at 572 so i think the market is indeed realizing that uh, when it comes to what's actively being brought in and bought from isogen is not a 500 disc range it's not a 550 range it's going to be above that but it's still of course the best opportunity in a very long time when we reach 550 and so there's are definitely actively uh players that are that are like taking the opportunity and even selling just below that is still a great price point for them so it will be um in uh, with ups and downs but i think the general trend for isogen is still up then we've got noxium that is stopping its descent so that's definitely a bit of a change in the market here as well we are now at 862 to 840 still below 900 discs so i would still say that we are in pretty cheap noxium but what i think could happen is the same um uh, the same uh, response that uh, i have when it comes to mixalon because i I stay in high sec at the moment considering 
uh, how much uh, time I have for EVE Online. And so if I mine Mixalon, I'm hoarding it. And I think for Noxium, if they mine Noxium, I think they, they have the same response. Uh, they're definitely hoarding most of it, willing to wait for uh, better times and better prices. We do still have active supply right here, but you gotta go uh, up a little bit to get just a couple million units. So I don't think they're that big sell orders that are coming in at the moment. Definitely the big miners of Noxium are, in my opinion, waiting for better prices. Nelsic is probably uh, different again. Yes, clearly we uh, might have overdone it a little bit with the, with the pullback here. So we were at well above 3000 disc, pulled back to around 2000 disc. That was maybe a little bit too much. So now uh, for the last couple of weeks, we are back up for Zydrine. We're looking at 2170 for the sellers and 2100 for the buyers. This is actually a normal tiny spread because all of this, of course, does have to be imported from Nelsic itself. But clearly a 10% gain over the last couple of weeks was not that uh, unexpected considering the 30% um, loss over uh, the last uh, two months. And then for Megasite that lost a lot less, we are basically starting to move flat. So uh, I would say Megasite has found its range, 2,600 for the sellers, 2,500 for the buyers. A little bit more spread here. I think it is still experienced as being quite expensive, but those sellers are dictating the market for the most part. And Megasite is back as the king, the most expensive tech one related mineral. Uh, where in my opinion it belongs. Uh, that's historically how I know Megasite, the most special one uh, for, uh, for Tech One production. And then finally, we've got Morphite, of course, that oh, is actually losing a little bit of ground. Is it below 40 for the sellers? Yeah, 39,400 for the first seller. We still have quite a few actually below uh, 40,000 as well, including 250,000 units. And then we get 38,400 for the buyers. Pretty normal spread here, I think, as well. Uh, but a little bit of pressure on perhaps a little bit of oversupply or a little bit less activity in Nelsic yet again here. Um, and I think that big seller just below 40,000 is going to stabilize the Morphite market for at least uh, a week. Uh, we'll see. Uh, well, it's actually a million units a day, so we could shoot through that pretty quickly. Um, but overall, uh, minerals are a little bit under pressure with uh, one big exception, that is Isogen. And then the next one would be Megasite that's really maintaining its value a lot better than the rest. Next up, we have the PI market that's coming in at 1730. There we go. Let's see what's happening here. So I would say for the minerals, first sign that industrial output is slowing down a little bit, but perhaps the arms race for capital ships uh, is still going all out. And uh, here broadcast nodes are down a little bit for the week, but still uh, clearly on the five day moving average at the highest price of the year. We're talking 2.5 million for the sellers and 2.5 million for the buyers. I think that definitely uh, shows that demand is still very, very strong. Construction blocks continuing to go up from uh, last week as well, where we actually got a little bit of a dip here just at the start of February that has been fully absorbed and we are back at 11.3 for the sellers, 10,600 for the buyers. Narrow spread, less than a thousand disc, very expensive construction blocks that are actually very common. You can see the volumes here as well. Uh, so quite a few sellers coming in, bringing the prices down. The market is all too happy to grab all the construction blocks that they can. And then just normal volumes actually push the price back above 11,000 disc. I think coolants will be similar. Yes, we are going up for coolants as well. And that's back to 11.7 as well. 11,000 here for the buyers and even more narrow margin between sellers and buyers as volumes become a little bit more of a problem. So same story, they saw an opportunity to sell at a great price, big volumes coming in, pushing the price back to a 10K, but then, uh, you know, that's easily grabbed by everyone that wants all of these coolants, and then we start to go back up in price. Enrich Uranium next, S sort of the same story. You can see the volume dump here yet again to bring us to the lowest price for like four or five months or so, but then on just normal volumes, right? These are pretty normal volumes 
after that uh, it's just not enough demand is too high 14,000 for the sellers 12,000 for buyers bit of spread here so we're definitely rushing things on the supply side that could be a little bit too much too quickly in fact volumes are coming up already so i think some traders will see this as a sell opportunity so we may be uh you know looking at a little bit of a downside after this but i mean 14,000 for enrich uranium definitely pretty great then we get another advanced move material and as expected one year high point for advanced uh, for integrity response drones 3.4 million to 3.2 million the spread just stays tiny the the market is desperate for more of this stuff mechanical parts cresting at 11.5 10.7 for the buyers so again very very expensive miniature electronics hovering over the last week at the highest range of the year so this is still a refined pi material selling for 17,000 disc there is a more normal spread here right 15.6 so that's that's probably a 10 percent spread or very close to that which is kind of normal but that is after a week of pretty much 17 15 to 17 thousand disc range uh, without too much effort which is of course sort of crazy if we think back to just a couple of years ago nano factories coming back down a little bit on the week but again well above the entire chart for the year at 1.7 million 1.5 for the buyers can a bit of margin that opens up here as well but from a one-year high point that's probably not abnormal either Organic mortar applicators easily doing a couple of weeks of uh, flat prices at the highest price of the year as well. 1.2 to 1.15 million. So super narrow spread whenever things stabilize just a little bit. Our recursive computing module uh, did that early pump to 1.5 million. So uh, one year high point here. Definitely pay the price for that. So some sellers coming in. Uh, but now again more normal volumes and prices are back above pretty much the fully uh, one year range 1.3 million to 1.2 million and then we have our robotics that are maintaining the price I'm, I'm actually really surprised by that to see all of these refined PM tiers like coolants, construction blocks, etc. well above 10,000 disc and to not see robotics make 100k uh, but again on this one year chart we are at a new range 92 to 3000 to 91000 so the demand is definitely there uh, but specialized uh, planetary materials apparently uh, are able to to keep things in check decently well as i think mostly an intermediate product uh, compared to the advanced um right here the advanced pi materials that are definitely you know those that are immediately needed for for building large ships then we get rocket fuels back up probably another one year high point at 15.3 to 14.6 so again less than a thousand is spread here is not a lot self-harmonizing power cores unstoppable and uh, still going up so we went up very sharply to a one year high point well above 2.5 million flat for a week and then rather than uh, you know traders whoa that's a nice opportunity apparently it's even here to stay no we're building on that one year high points to even higher prices 2.9 million and the reason is probably just complete exhaustion and uh, consolidation as well probably someone with a big wallet saying well let's let's try a 2.9 million range here for the self-harmonizing power course let's see how desperate the market is and it is very desperate because the buyers are now at almost 2.8 million as well so crazy expensive advanced pi materials smart fab units are at 99,000. look at that again just shy of that 100k 90,000 for the buyers actually normal spread so the specialized pi materials market is still a little bit different sterile conduits are at 1.4 to 1.3 million not the one year high point but again best range of the year supercomputers actually these seem to be in my opinion more more tied to uh, the advanced move materials that are uh, in desperate uh, desperately needed and we're running out of this stuff as well 164,000 disc 140 for the buyers as well very very expensive synthetic oil is looking at 21,000 disc for a refined PI material. Let's see if there is something happening. Nope, it's all happening in GDAS, so nothing in the trade hubs, uh, just to jump out or something like that. That's, that's to me, that's a, an absolutely incredible price. That's like double what we're used to for the sellers. They're 
all the way up here and then we have the start of the year at 7500 is that's almost three times the price here for the sellers and the fact that this max price actually does make it up here uh, is a pretty strong indication that uh, you know people are just willing to pay the price for uh, for synthetic oil and I think these big volumes mean that someone just came in and said I'm gonna buy everything that's not nailed down up to a certain price point and then we're just gonna start working from here let's see again how much this market is willing to bear um, very interesting of course very normal as well you want to make as much isk as possible uh, but again that's one warning I don't think CCP will see this as being sustainable uh, endlessly so I do think eventually they'll step in synthetic synapses 124,000 to 120,000 so super narrow margin on a one year high point yet again transcranial microcontrollers are at 103 to 99 so that's again very narrow margin a little bit better specialized PI materials again are in my opinion doing uh, weathering this storm a little bit better but both before that and after that in uh, complexity it's a different story Water cooled CPU 9389, uh, so very narrow margin on a pullback of around a thousand disk. I think the main reason here is uh, water cooled CPU was so cheap and does so plentiful for so long that we are uh, a little bit like in the um, in the isogen market we're looking at reserves that are then just you know best price in a very long time let's just dump a huge amount of it bring the price down 10 percent that's uh, like very easy to happen here whereas for our synthetic oils for instance well no one has that much synthetic oil lying around that they can uh, that they can bring the price down to 2000 disc in just a couple of days rather the opposite then we have our wetware mainframes finally that are now also basically flat for the week on the highest range of the year 2.8 million to 2.7 million so this is still uh, an incredible time for uh, i think it's only omega players that can make pi uh, you are selling at the best prices we've seen in a very very long time uh, i probably pulled the trigger a little bit too early but i have been selling any and all pi that i'm making as quickly as possible uh, my thinking is that this is the new bottleneck especially the advanced pi material i mean here look at that one year high points and and the, the the spreads are just so thin same thing here this one yeah did it a little bit early but overall we are talking crazy advanced pi materials prices i would not be uh, surprised if the nerve bat is incoming eventually Next up, we have advanced moon materials at 27.30. There we go. Let us get started with those carbides. So for Galente carbides, we got crystalline carbonite. Yeah, not my expectation, I thought on the decreased supply we could start to see a little bit more volatility as well after gaining a little bit of ground but that's not happening you can definitely see the last couple of weeks have been very stable with a slow downtrend so basically uh, the nerf from ccp ha here has been absorbed by the players uh, everyone has adapted to that and the supply chains are have recovered and uh, things are are stable yet again at just below 150 basically 147 to 144 for Kaldari, it's titanium carbide. You can sort of see the same thing, a little bit of, well, what's going to happen with this nerve. So we shot up to almost 200 disc and a one year high point, but then we came back very quickly. Obviously people had a lot of uh, titanium carbide around that they bought for very cheap prices, potentially around 100 disc. So 100% profit or 75% profit is definitely pretty nice. So that brings the price back down. And then after that, we come into the realization that, all right, it's just, x percent more and or less supply so more in price and we are clearly stabilizing here at 151 to a 148 for minmatar it's a fernite carbide well basically one big bubble <laughs> you could call it up to 150 and so we are settling here at the 115 uh, for for fernite carbide definitely a little bit cheaper i think the uh, the uh, most likely explanation for that is still the nerf for the heavy assault cruiser for uh, Minmatar that was like part of the big meta 
especially for the Imperium. Um, and as a result, now there's just, you know, all these supply chains exist. There is a lot of Fernet Carbide being made, uh, but it, it's too much considering the new uh, less popular state of some of the Minmatar ships. And then for Amar, it's Tungsten Carbide that has a little bit more volatility, right? A little bump here, a little bit bump here at the tail end uh, 160 to 152 I'm not sure how to explain this one because uh, Amar has actually been uh, the more stable uh, of all of the Tech 2 ships and the uh, advanced moon materials as far as I could tell uh, but so this one is well above 150 um, then going back below that a little bit of a more of a bumpy ride uh, something to keep uh, an eye out for but nothing all too dramatic either then we have the metamaterials. We are looking for Galente, so that's photonic metamaterials, basically full recovery around 10,000 disc, and we are starting to just hover around that range. 10.4 to 99, yeah, that's pretty much 10,000 disc. For Kaldari, it's non-linear metamaterials. Ooh, a little bit of a jump here at the tail end. That's interesting. Definitely a bit more volatility than what we're used to, but let's keep in mind that we come from a 20,000 at the start of the year down to 10,000 sell for 15,000 that's the volatility that uh, I would love to see here that would eventually translate to take two ships that is not happening just yet we are currently selling these for well still 13,000 so that's already back down uh, to around here we are I think we're just going to stabilize this very quickly as well and then for Minmatar plasmonic metamaterials definitely also a bit more of a, a bumpy ride testing a low here of around 10,000 disc we are currently at 12,000 uh, a little bit less than than most of the others nothing too special though and then for Amar it's terahertz metamaterials that are well easily maintaining or more easily maintaining uh, the gains here at 13.5 oh ooh, that's actually also starting to i think show a little bit of pressure at the tail end here look at the volumes i think someone just brought in a lot of terahertz metamaterials to take advantage of well that relatively high price compared to everything else but the volatility unfortunately i'm not seeing it and then the other advanced boom materials we can go through the list but other than a tiny bump here for fermi on the condensates i'm not expecting too much and you can also see how quickly you know big volume tiny bump so this is buying just to push the price up to um let's see if i can grab that point 2000 disc above 2k and oh no that's definitely not 2k what the hell is show me something oh 46000 disc and we are already back at 45000 disc 43 for the bar so definitely a little bit of a bump on some big buying but i think we will stabilize here again quite nicely ferrogel starts its wavy pattern at the current range it's really not that much to say fuller riders did a full recovery but you can see how stable it has been for the last couple of weeks as well hypersynaptic fibers tiny bump and we're coming back down so again this is the new range here which is around 6.5 for the sellers 6.2 for the buyers narrow margins as well uh, 3000 to 28 here and you can see again slowly we are stabilizing all of this quite easily phenolic composites oh that max price is shooting up to 1750 yep 1682 now so a couple of sell orders coming in but here we definitely uh, i think got a little bit of um, of active buying pushing us up to 1750 um, it's going to be interesting to see next week but my expectation again i'll be plugged very quickly and that below 1500 is what phenolic composites is going to go for most of the time pressurized oxidizers slide down trend and also stabilizing reinforced carbon fiber slide up trend but also quite stable ceramic fibers definitely a full gain on this one so it's able to um, stay at the highest level for the year 320 to 320 <laughs> very very narrow margin here so when there's enough demand we can maintain our gains but it's actually quite rare and it is definitely on the cheaper end of the advanced materials like the ceramic fibers 
and then what was the other one? The Pharaoh Shell? No, no. Yeah, there we go. The Fullerites that have made it back to 700 discs, which I think historically is still very cheap, but definitely not 400 discs bad. So, advanced Mumets in general, um, same story I would say across the board. Things are stabilizing. We have some gains, uh, but it's not huge, and unfortunately, we don't see volatility uh, continue. Next up, the Tech 2 ships. That's coming in at 3430. Let's go through the list and see what we can spot. Uh, but again, my expectation is that yeah, we have, uh, we're looking forward to more of this. Basically, a slow burn towards the new range. So here, the Basilisk managed to make it to 180 million. We're down to 166 to 152. So last week, probably a great time to sell if you were looking at taking some profits. Cerberus has actually stabilized very quickly and not at an expensive price, 140 to less than 130 for the buyers. is still pretty damn cheap in my book. Then we have the Curse that also, well, went up um, above 150 and is here to stay, I think 157 to 152 now for the first buyers. You can see also how those minimum prices have started to come up as advanced boom materials have basically shot up and then stabilized at the higher range. Then we get our damnation. Oof, look at those minimum prices, completely gone all of a sudden. So we are back above 300, 316 to 270. Only selling happening here. Buyers are not catching anything. They'll have to close the gap. Uh, same story here for the deacon. It's very slow, but you can see how those minimum prices are slowly forced up to close that gap to the new sell prices 19 to 16.4 million. Next, we have the Eagle uh, that's actually doing a bit more of a, a basilisk like move that's definitely moving to a new range close to what we started a year ago. At around 180 one just below 180 for the sellers and then 150 for the buyer so that still has leaves a little bit of spread but it's definitely the sellers that are dictating the market i don't see that changing i think it's basically the new costs of advanced boom materials mean a new minimum bar for what the sellers have to go for they won't budge anymore and so eventually those buyers that are looking for the really cheap chips will have to compete more and more towards those new sell prices so it is the new range that's coming in it's definitely okay i would say especially if you bought very speculatively in order to sell in order to take profits you can see here buy the eagle at the lowest price point for the year which you've got several opportunities to buy well below 130 and now you're selling them for 180 that's definitely a nice trade so you can definitely do that uh, as well at the moment um, and and i would say don't expect unless something big happens in uh, nullsec or maybe with the direct enlistment but i don't think we'll get huge fleet fights of, of take two or, or stuff like that uh, right off the bat that's when some real volatility can kick in but otherwise you have to just look right here for instance we're touching 250 for the buyers i think yeah 250 to 272 um, we just have to look for that new range this to me looks like an eos jumping point whereas before of course it was like closer to 230 yeah there you go so we gained 2 million uh, 20 million here on that um, on that minimum price you still have the wavy patterns you can still definitely uh, trade um, but it's, it's difficult to say that we'll see like huge gains which was for instance possible here when you could have bought for 280 sold for a, a well above 350 and then just a 10 days after that <laughs> bought for 280 again wait a little bit sell for two, 330 that's just not on the books at this point the air is also being tested here look at that are these minimum prices really close to 30 million no nope. 38 for the buyers 44 for the sellers so that's just because of today's uh it's today's min max that still has bugs i think it, it takes data from uh more than just a station or something like that uh, i think that's what's happening but um yeah again while we have a little bit of pressure on the minimum prices there's no way that we get to that 30 million uh, uh, below 30 million for a buy order anytime soon anymore so then it's back to 
trying to understand the charts, trying to find the new ranges. Flycatcher, very surprising to me how stable this one is. Up a little bit for the week, but still below 40 million for the sellers and then 37 for the buyers. I think here that's basically very slowly what, I ex what I'm expecting to happen for take two is that sellers are going up and then buyers will have to follow suit here for the flycatcher. They're basically staying very close together um, at the price that we've seen for the last couple of months. Then we got the Guardian, that one is continuing to climb, so this again a full recovery to 180 is not bad, selling at 183, buyers are still at 140, but obviously you're not buying them for 100 million anymore. And so that's the, that's the thing, I think here, Guardian selling, take your profits, especially if you followed me along uh, over the last year and you bought close to that 100 million mark, you're looking of course at a nice 75-80% profit right now pretty damn good and then again the trick will be find what those new minimum prices will be and it won't be 100 million of course so this is um, definitely i think uh, the guardian trade i would try to unload uh, and, and take my profits then we get the heretic slow burn up here as well now selling for 42 million and buyers at 37 so some of them it looks like a lot of the destroyers um, are, are not volatile enough and just have that you can see that minimum price slowly going up five day moving average very close to 20 day moving average and the max price is also just slowly going up it's just a new reality of what it costs to make these ships that is slowly coming true so not what i was hoping for which was more of a, a volatile chart the hound then actually seeing a little bit of pressure this week very narrow margins as well 18 million to almost 16 million very difficult to say uh, if this is an opportunity stealth bombers do have a little bit more volatility you can see you get a little bit more spiky behavior even at the, the end of the chart or the second half of the chart um, so i always like to buy at least a couple of those or to have a couple of those on hand um, but but the big volatility i don't see it happening that much it was the iki tursa next continuing a sharp decline definitely lowest price in quite a while we're talking well below 500 at 495 for the sellers and then 450 for the buyers now the traglavian trade i definitely don't recommend that to uh everyone uh, but this is this is a pretty consistent drop off you can definitely see that we're on the correct uh, part of the chart in order to pick up a buyer close to a 450 uh, so if you want in then that is definitely something to look into because if you can sell them above 500 million and I think it's not that unreasonable to expect the 500 plus to come back at some point uh, then it's a nice trade because then just on a single ship you can make that 50 60 million is profit uh, even with uh, lower volatility but you need that bigger wallet to take the risk of course then we get the ishtar um, actually did uh, see that jump in volatility the story here my expectation is still that it's the launch of the photon ui which caught quite a few bots of guard that they need replacing and so all of a sudden we have big volumes lots of ishtars that need to be moved and so we shoot up to a one year high point definitely it was an awesome sell opportunity we're still quite expensive 174 to 160 for the buyers and you could have bought these for 130 here in september october and throughout the summer so you have that trade that's still possible uh, but again the volatility here is not because of what happened with advanced boom materials or anything like that it's more like yeah a ccp thing happened <laughs> for the ishtar niche and so we got that spike here the kirin is slowly moving up here as well although the sell prices have moved up decently quickly to a 20 million range buyers are now that's yeah again that that is that story right sellers are yeah it's it's no longer 15 million for a kirin it's 20 million for a kirin because otherwise i'm just not making anything on my tech 2 production cycle and then the buyers well they try to hold on but eventually they have to give up and they close the gap again as well then we get the Manticore markets also up, but you can see here very narrow spread now, slowly moved its way to 20 million for the sellers and it's 19 million for the buyers. So it's still more of a story. Did you manage to buy them for close to 15 million here uh, in September or December? Well, you've got a trade on your hands now. Uh, if you're looking to actively trade the Manticore uh, in and out very quickly, um, this is still not the market for that. 
Then we get the Nemesis, even more of a slow burn uh, towards the 15 million. Actually, it's almost 17 for the sellers, 15 for the buyers. So that's uh, pretty cheap. Nighthawk. Actually, the buyers here holding on a little bit better, but you can clearly see in the last week that they are being forced up. Sellers 300, yeah, 307 to 273. That gap is just slowly closing. Then we get the Oneros, had that nice January bump up to 180. Definitely another one of those sell opportunities. So the logistics cruisers are uh, the, the winners, uh, potentially the easiest winners or, or the fastest winners, I would say, uh, with all of the big changes and with the nerf to advanced boom materials. You could have definitely taken a profit here. You could have definitely, or you can still take a profit here. And then for the Guardian, right now seems to be the best time to do so uh oniros is back down we are talking 126 to 120 but again the the new bottom prices is uh the new thing we're looking for because it's not like uh, 80 million or whatever it was for for the oniros down here in september then we get a purifier again minimum prices you can see those go up as the costs uh, slowly ramps up here as well 20 million to 19 million it's really difficult to make a trade on that then we get the rook uh, shot up a little bit quickly i think and so supplies is uh, bringing this down but uh, then you can also see how the minimum prices have basically settled well above 150 175 to 162 so that's uh, basically not going anywhere from this range i don't think then we get the saber late bloomer and uh, a destroyer that actually has a nice little sell opportunity so even in january and february you could have bought these for close to 35 million isk we're currently selling at 45 million 38 for the buyers so they are starting to realize i think as well that uh, we are going to move to that higher range scalpel um, yeah, again, you can see how those minimum prices are slowly, ever so slowly edging up here as well. Whereas the sellers are staying uh, just about 15, yeah, 18 to 14 million, exactly. Scimitar, completely new range here as well. Not much to say, not, not a big uh, sell opportunity or noticeable sell opportunity on this logistics cruiser. 153 to a 130 million. Uh, definitely not uh, the best prices we've seen and then the slip near this is a little bit of surprise managed to make its way to a 350 million but then rather than uh, just like most of the other uh, command ships um, you know settling at a 300 maybe a little bit 300 is actually testing a nice little 250 low so here we're talking 264 but 251 for the sellers you can see how the daily averages are still at the right uh, right uh, side of the chart. I would say jumping in here uh, with the, the sleep near for 250, just like with the EOS for 250. To me, that that would is definitely a possibility that this is the new low range for the command chips, and uh, that uh, these become your uh, your jumping points uh, for uh, for potentially a trade. Now it is. It is, you get, get that warning, it's a command ship, it's a battle cruiser. So the volumes here, you can see on a daily basis, it's not a lot. So I would never hold more than one, um, but you can definitely make some ISK on this. And then we get the Vagabond. Uh, again, slowly, minimum price is going up as the sell price first stabilized here. And then we're, we're basically at the current sell range, 160 to 155 that gap is gone and then the Zarmast showing a little bit of pressure as well and uh, unfortunately not getting close to 400 oh yep there we go 477 400 million for the buyers and on the chart you can see how those minimum prices are coming down daily averages still below five day moving average we might be just too late because we've been flat here for three days but both the Zarmast and the other one where the hell is it the Iki Tursa are to me looking like uh, potentially a jumping point for a Triglavian trade right there in Tech 2. But again, far more risky, uh, definitely far more expensive than most of the others for their same category. Anyways, for Tech 2, I would say uh, I definitely understand if uh, players would be uh, taking the profits that they see, such as for the Guardian here. That's definitely uh, a nice trade to do if you held on for your ships uh, for like six months or so. Um, 
but unfortunately my expectation is that unless a big war happens or something like that i don't see the very spiky behavior that we've uh, we've seen before in tech 2 uh, come back just yet next up the tech 3 ships that's coming in at 4850 There we go. Uh, we'll start with those destroyers. So the Confessor losing a little bit of ground on the price. Minimum prices went down uh, substantially all of a sudden. We can see how that gap is yet again closing down. Volumes are still abysmal. So we are at 51 to 47.5 million. And well, supply is anemic, demand is anemic. This is just not. Uh, a, a healthy market Hecate you can see here again minimum price have completely closed the gap uh, sell prices are slightly under pressure we're basically finding the new range 57 to 54 million for the Hecate then we get the Jackdaw uh, minimum price are still hesitating but I think generally they are closing the gap here as well uh, 54 to 50 million that's definitely less than 10 percent in spread as well and then same story for this vehicle you can see how the sell prices went up then the minimum prices slowly are closing the gap yet again here we have the 53 to 47 million and supply again is next to nothing i still think it's the same story what happened here uh, looking back at all of this is that we had the expansion and we had uh, all of that faction uh, ship activity that eventually had its impact, um, a sustained impact on the price of gas, which I think is in part uh, something that uh, tactical destroyers will need. So we have just, it costs us more to make them, but it's still struggling with that one big problem is that it's... Uh, uh, its value proposition for the tactical destroyers compared to take two ships even at current prices well again they went up in price as well uh, is still not good and so this is now a tiny market a market that really doesn't move uh, at all uh, because well why fly uh, a confessor at these prices when you can also fly uh, a take two ship that uh, has even more options so i think here for this one i would say uh, if ccp is looking at doing something I would want to buff these tactical destroyers. I'm not sure how to do it. They're already pretty unique, of course, uh, but the, it's just not happening here. It's just a tiny, tiny market. Then we have the cruisers. Let's take a look at these. So we get the Legion and that's the volatility. That is trading to my surprise. The one category that for a very long time I said, I would not be actively trading here. It feels like gambling because it was such a small market that uh, it could easily be manipulated and we saw that quite often uh, now that you no longer lose your skill points when your legion for instance is destroyed it's really picked up and it's become uh, far more interesting in my opinion for trading so here is the legion that is now selling for 260 million 234 for the buyers very pronounced one year high point a nice sell opportunity and this happens in just like a week for the final push two weeks for uh, so high point and then another high point so very very nice if you're still holding on to a legion that you bought for instance for a 180 or you spotted this opportunity here as the new minimum price probably 185 or something like that you're looking very nice and you already have your massive profits uh, potentially then we get the loki still not as good but you can see how we we had some pressure and let's see if this is today's minimum 197 to 186 still a little bit early i would say but you can clearly see before if we touched 180 you had those jumping points that doesn't seem to be the case anymore i would say below 190 is actually pretty nice and we're we're there as well uh, and then here is for instance sell opportunity to 20 200 million can happen quite often as well so the spread has reduced from what we've seen for most of the year but i think there is still that trade potential here then we get the produce sort of showing what i mean although we didn't touch a 180 a 185 was probably possible and now we're already back at 253 for the sellers 230 for the buyers very nice wave big spreads here um, or big changes in the price that is tradable and then the tengu also a little bit more stable just like with the loki on this one uh currently 200 million to 184 184 yeah that's that's not bad actually if this has a little bit of momentum i think you can pick him up close to 185 
and that is definitely a doable uh, trade then as well so nice nice sell opportunity in both the legion and in the proteus very nice um, it's a, it's a, the same story though as with take two finding the jumping points is definitely the tricky part i would always say look for the chart to have this pattern you can see how the daily averages are staying below the five day moving average and are going down this is the period you want to set up a buy order because that's where you get the best chance of grabbing the cheapest chip so that's take three for the extra product for the week we're continuing the list and i'm choosing the faction battle cruiser including the new one so 5450 i think it's the first time that we take a look at all of these so let's go battle cruisers faction battle cruisers and there are no pirate faction battle cruisers so we can dive straight into navy here is the brudix navy issue um start is march all right let's see that's actually not a full chart starts the year at 250 and you can see though how the expansion has brought in a lot of uh, supply and interest and 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 a lot more volume when it comes to these navy ships so the navy brudix you can see how the volumes have shot up here and then the price has stabilized 140 to 132 and no one is buying them interesting then we get the cyclone uh, that's one of the new ones so here we get definitely a weird chart that starts at like 4.5 billion isk <laughs> and so we're not going to get anything out of the chart here but a 158 to 130 million and then can we see some volumes here yeah from nothing to um yeah i'm not sure what that would be a day 30 50 a day it's still not great All right let's go next for the drake navy issue that was at 150 starts at 150 so actually throughout the year pretty damn stable we just again see here in november how the sustained volumes have clearly gone up has always been quite popular 157 to 133 ferox navy issue that's the new one so again the chart is not great 142 to 126 maybe the volumes can tell us something uh 20 ish if we're generous 50 for the drake and for the brudix can make its way to 50 so those new ones definitely still have to um, find their niche none of them then i would say are considered so far to be uh, completely overpowered or anything like that harbinger navy issue um, a little bit better in the volumes definitely cheap in price as well 148 to 136 hurricane fleet issue a bit more volatility so that one is clearly more popular as well look at the volumes able to get a 50 a day uh, quite often even 75 on a couple of days here probably more expensive as well 160 to 142 so hurricane fleet issue seems to be uh, oh and that's because it's an old one as well yeah there we go still has the one year charts then we get Myrmidon, Navy issue, that's not that great in the volumes, 148 to 130. And finally, the Prophecy, that's a bit better, 157 to 135, and has better volumes as well, able to get a 50 a day on quite a few occasions. So I would say for the new ones, in all likeliness, the Prophecy Navy issue is the most popular one does that have missiles and drones let's take a quick look at that no actually it's not missiles does it have it does have ooh, nice drone capacity and uh, 50 so that's uh, five medium drones that's definitely not bad um, so prophecy navy issue i think the most popular of the new ones cyclone you can see volumes well actually this one was not bad but yeah struggling for actually 50 cyclone navy issue pretty good as well ferox not so good and then myrmidon i'm uh, actually yeah definitely below 25 not all that popular although i personally love uh, the myrmidon and its model and all of that good stuff um i would say here what i want to what i want to add is something that i saw in one of the comments right when i mentioned that perhaps this is a trade opportunity i think i also warned you guys that we don't know what ccp is planning for direct enlistment and we could still go either way what is very clear from for instance this brudix chart is that the expansion that we just had around faction warfare did not increase the value of these faction ships of these faction battle cruisers in fact it lowered the price 
by making more of the resources available and it increased availability quite drastically it also made things more uniform right it's like basically 150 million for a navy faction battle cruiser that is it and so i granted right jumping in even at one year low points for these uh, faction ships right now uh, is a bit of a gamble because it is definitely possible that the direct enlistment will just increase supply and availability even more and decrease prices but i can definitely see scenarios as well where they become the ships that you need in order to take part in that activity and then maybe demand can shoot up enough that we'll see higher prices so that is really the gamble uh, to take if you want in on the faction trade around direct enlistment there is absolutely zero guarantee that you'll get a better price in fact the last expansion in november has decreased prices for all of these ships so you'd be uh, sitting on the uh, on, yeah with losses uh, if you bought before that expansion so something to keep in mind uh, there's never any certainty in the market anyways that's going to be it for this eve talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time